Hello and uh, welcome back to another edition of my prediction videos. Well, <coughs> this uh, round or this weekend we have uh, and some good fights to see and predict. Well, let's start. Um, well, first of all, um, uh, I want to go straight to the uh, the best, uh, perhaps the best fight of this weekend, probably. Um, it's uh, George Groves versus Callum Smith. Yes. <clears throat> This is the final of the Super Series, you know, Super Middleweight. And it's gonna be a, a one hell of a fight, I think. Because both guys are still in their, in their prime, you know, especially Smith. And uh, they are... Quite a, a lot is at stake, to put it simply, you know. And, uh, <laughs> The, the winner takes it all, pretty much, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I slightly favor Callum Smith, both because of his uh, height and reach advantage, and because of his youth, I guess, slightly, but mostly because uh, he really can punch, too, and, uh, he he is really you know uh, a good all around fighter. He's a he's a good boxer too. But uh, of course he's he's a pretty devastating puncher or can be when he wants to. George Groves, of course, he has his share of. Uh, important victories like uh, the last one against Chris Eubank Jr. It was a very, very good performance and a really big victory for him because uh, just before that Eubank destroyed that guy Yildirim who was kind of, he, he proved to be overrated but he it was very, he's a tough guy that guy Yildirim and hasn't been knocked out before or since and Eubank just destroyed him and uh, while you know uh, yeah Gross he's also, also of course can hit and uh, he's a good technical I guess fighter yeah he you can say that because uh, in uh, both fights against Carl Froch, especially the second one, Gross was really kind of outboxing Froch for most of the time in the, in the second fight, especially. So, uh, you know, um, so yes, Gross has the ability and power and he's got more experience than Smith so why am I picking Callum Smith well mostly because uh, Gross uh, lost to uh, Badu Jack and mainly because Jack was just a bigger stronger guy who was able to you know bully uh, Gross and uh, I always thought Gross looked kind of small, a small super midweight, despite, you know, being a, a natural super midweight, a legit one, but I, I always thought he looked kind of, you know, skinny and not so powerful like some other, especially now there are some super midweights who really look big, like they are like cruiserweights or something. And uh, so when Callum Smith is, uh, is uh, as I said, 
quite a bit taller and six foot three while gross is uh just under six feet so and uh, smith has uh, the power you know to really uh put gross in jeopardy and uh i just think it will be a really hard fight for both men uh, but eventually uh, since gross is uh, known as an aggressive fighter and uh you know Callum he hits actually harder than Badu Jack and Jack put Gross down twice I believe and uh, so Gross can't really box too much without engaging in you know in uh, a slug fest or exchanging so that will be I think his undoing this time because uh, against Eubank for some reason he was able to really well Eubank is a former middleweight he's not so big you know for as a super middleweight while Callum Smith is and uh, you know I think Smith will win anyway and but it will happen somewhere kind of late I think he may you know just uh, wear down gross eventually and stop him in the 10th round i think or something like that so uh, yeah there you have it <coughs> of course gross can also do the same to smith uh, i think but uh with the, the height disadvantage i think this is the first time actually gross is fighting someone as tall as smith Carl Froch was perhaps previously the tallest guy he fought and he is 6'1 and Badu Jack also yeah so they are both two inches shorter than Smith yes so that was what I think I think will happen uh, Smith wins by a, a late stoppage or an, a clean knockout perhaps even I don't know uh, if Froch could pull it off, so why not Smith? Um, yeah. Then uh, another fight. Let's see the next fight. Mm. Yeah, Victor Ortiz versus John Molina, John John Molina Jr. That was kind of. Uh, kind of interesting and uh, kind of tough to predict predict really you know uh, because uh, because both guys are really kind of uh, washed up uh, not really in their at their peak anymore so uh, you know i think and both guys are you know heavy-handed they can can knock you out with one punch or just a couple so it this kind of depends on who lands first i think uh, um, ortiz of course he was knocked out by uh, <coughs> berto in six rounds yeah and uh, and uh, Molina was stopped in eight by uh, Terence Crawford and that was kind of two almost two years ago now uh, since the Ortiz the last fight he had was a draw against Devon Alexander in this February so it's i guess it's a rather good sign i mean it's a sign that he is not finished completely yet anyway even though alexander is uh, no no nowhere near his prime and, and anymore either but uh, anyway uh, 
I kind of hope that Ortiz will win this. Uh, and Molina has been taken out before in one round by uh, Antonio De Marco, so anything is possible. But uh, it's a, a dangerous fight for both men, I think, and uh, it will not go the, the distance very likely. <coughs> So my prediction is that Victor Ortiz wins by a knockout in the sixth round, something like that. Um, because I think uh, Molina being kind of tall and awkward and kind of easy to hit, perhaps, and Ortiz being a more athletic, you know, not that, I mean, not much shorter, but not as tall as Molina. So. That may give give him the edge in a slug fest, you know. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, let's see. Jorge Linares is fighting Abner Cotto, yeah. Well, Linares is of course having uh, coming back after a loss to Lomachenko and uh, he was doing well in that fight before the stoppage, before he was knocked out. He was doing rather well anyway, not as well perhaps as some people felt, uh, but uh, he was definitely holding his own. So I think uh, Abner Koto, he's been stopped a couple times. Uh, he was knocked out in one round by Omar Figueroa, and uh, yeah, Linares will take a little bit more longer, I think, because this is his first fight uh, since that loss, and uh, it will. Uh, I think he can stop. He will stop Koto in like nine rounds. Yeah. And uh, last. I think the last fight is Erkan Tepper versus Robert Hellenius. Yeah, Robert Hellenius, I think he is pretty much, I mean, long since been finished as a serious contender, especially when he was knocked out by Johan Duhopa. And, uh, Tepper is Perhaps not as good as he he looked uh, until you know it it turned out to be uh, <laughs> steroids or whatever he was taking that that made him look that good. But I think he he is the favorite, of course, to win. And uh, but I don't think it will be by a KO. Not very likely. Uh, because uh, I don't know really. Anyway, my my prediction is a unanimous decision for Tepper. I just don't see Helenius being able to do much at this point, you know. And since the fight is in Germany, and he's not uh, well, Tepper is kind of raised in Germany. I think so. He will get the nod definitely. I can perhaps even see a stoppage win for Tepper, uh, perhaps in the middle rounds. But if it goes past the middle rounds, I, I think it will go to, to the scorecards. Yes, yeah, so that was all for this time. And see you until the next time. Bye-bye.